Have you recently purchased a new or used vehicle? Or perhaps you're researching for a new or used vehicle, but you're wondering how to set up and use all the technology that we find in a driver's information system and the infotainment screen. If so, you're at the right place. Hi folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride, and today I'm gonna to show you how to do just that. But before I do, take a moment to give us a like and hit that subscribe button down below. Let's get started. Today we're working with our friends at Maury's West End Lincoln. Welcome to our how-to video on the 2021 Lincoln Navigator L. This is the black label trim level. And so we're gonna start with the uh, driver's uh, dashboard and then we'll move over to the infotainment screen. So on the driver's dashboard here, this is a 12 inch digital display. And of course, uh, right now you'll see um, your media on the left, you've got your speedometer in the middle, and then you've got some digital information you can change and manipulate quite easily on the right. On the bottom, you've got your odometer, and then your engine temperature gauge, and then on the right bottom, you've got your fuel gauge and how many miles till empty. And then as well on the left, you have um, auto lights is on and auto high beam is currently turned on. All right, to control the driver's information screen, you're gonna use the buttons on the right side of the steering wheel. So uh, on the right side here, to start with, you've got a, a, a settings button or a gear button. And if you click on that, it's gonna bring you to a menu. Then you can use these uh, this uh, up and down uh, button here as well. It's a push okay, and then you can use the back button. So we're just gonna go to the top here. And the first thing you get is display setup. And if I click on the OK button, I can change the speedometer to kilometers per hour by just clicking on the OK button. I can unselect it by going to uh, clicking on it again. I can add the, tech the tachometer, so I'm gonna do that. You can look at measurement units here, and this is where you can change them. Of course, I'm going to leave it where it is. I'm gonna hit the back button. Um, temperature, right to here, you can change that as well. And then you've got tire pressure, which you can have between PSA, KPA, and bar. I'm gonna leave it on PS, uh, PSI, sorry, excuse me. And then of course you can select your different languages. All right, so I'm gonna just hit the back button twice and let's go down. Trash control is sort of an on off deal. So it's either off or it's on with a check mark. Same with hill descent, okay? And if I click it again, it goes off. Hey, you got trailer sway control that works the same way. You've got tow haul. Uh, if I click tow haul, I can have it on automatic or off. Hit the back button here, driver assistance. Now this is where some of your safety systems are. So I'm gonna click on okay. And we're gonna go up here to driver alert. And of course that's a simple check on or check off. Uh, and then lane keeping system. If I go in there, I can look at the mode and I can say I want just an alert. I want an aid, or I want both. Okay. I'm going to leave it where it was, hit the back button, the intensity of the alert. Okay, High, normal, or low. Again, you just toggle through and then click the OK button, um, and it'll actually vibrate the steering wheel for you. It's a haptic uh, steering wheel, so every time you click on something, you get uh, a, a, a feedback in the steering wheel to let you know what it's going to feel like, which I think is really nice. All right, let's uh, go back again, pre-collision. Okay, now here again, you have a, uh, you can set the alert intent sensitivity, the distance indication, and then you can turn active braking on or off. So I'm gonna go into here, that's just a check mark, and alert sensitivity is gonna bring you to a menu where again, you can have high, normal, or low. I'm gonna go back, and go back one more, towing. I click on there, I can go through a trailer uh, status. This does have the trailer backup system on it. Um, and of course there's no trailer hooked up to it, but um, you can actually steer the car using the uh, controller just to the right of the steering wheel here. So I'm gonna hit the back button here. You have trailer options under here. You can select the trailer, you can change the trailer settings and you can add a trailer. So if you have more than one trailer, you can actually customize it to the particular trailer that you're hooking up. And then you have a connection checklist there. Advanced settings. If I click on OK here and I click on vehicle, um, I can turn uh, the, uh, the alarm. I can set 
All sensors active, perimeter sensing, ask on exit. I'm just gonna leave it where it is. Auto engine off. If you click that, then the engine will run all the time. Click that and it will stop, you know, when it can to, to save fuel. Like at stop lights and that kind of thing. Uh, easy entry exit. I'm gonna leave that one on because that's really nice when you uh, when you stop the car, it pushes the steering wheel in, puts puts your seat back, makes it easier to uh, to get out. And when you get in, and then according to the key fob, we'll readjust everything for you. Down here, you've got some options under lighting. Uh, you can have your auto high beam on or off. You can uh, set your auto lamp delay so when you turn off your car, the headlights stay on for up to 120 seconds or just off. Hit the back button. Daytime lights, you can turn those on or off. And then you have the welcome lights when you hit the unlock or lock buttons on the remote. You can have those on or off. Okay, locks you can look at here. You, have, you can have the locks do an auto lock or not. You can have auto unlock. Uh, you can do feedback. So you want, do you want the horn to honk or do you just want the exterior lights to flash at you? Just to misconfirm. Okay, and then you have uh, miss lock, which you can have on or off. All right, mirrors. Uh, press the OK button. You can do the auto fold, which is where they're setting. That's nice. You put the vehicle in park and shut it off. And it, or I just put the vehicle in park and close the doors, like exit, and it'll automatically fold the mirrors for you. Hit the back button. Here's where you can uh, reset your oil life. Okay. And uh, let's go down one more. Power lift gate. I mean, the list just goes on and on. You can set your power lift gate. You can enable the switch or disable the switch. Remote start. Uh, now, under here, you can suggest, uh, so you can adjust several things. Auto climate or last setting. And so if it's cold out, it'll automatically turn on your heated steering wheel, your heated seats, warm up the car for you. And if it's hot out, it'll turn on the ventilated seats and the air conditioning. And you can set the duration here. Uh, let's take a look at seats and wheel. Okay, auto. So that'll mean it'll automatically adjust the steering wheel and the seat to whatever key fob remotely started the car. And you can turn that off. And then you can set the duration for five minutes to 15 minutes. All right, let's hit the back button again. Power running boards. You can turn the, make those auto, off, or out all the time. Windows. You can remote open or remote close all the windows and you can just un undo those if you don't want to be able to do those from the remote. But that is a nice feature. All right, and then wipers finally. You can have a courtesy wipe, okay? So if you have courtesy wipe, uh, every time you turn on your headlights, it will wipe for you. And then you can turn the rain sensing windshield wipers on or off. All right, we'll hit the back button. You also can program your key fob, up to three key fobs, and then we'll adjust your seat, your steering wheel, your pedals, your infotainment screen, your favorite settings, all that kind of stuff, uh, which is really, really nice, especially if you have some drivers that are tall and some are short that are all using the vehicle. I'm gonna hit the back button again. I'm gonna hit the back button one more time. Okay, now, this, I'm, I'm, right now I'm back to a screen here where I've got, I, I added the RPM gauge. So you notice our screen changed from the original a little bit. So the RPM's now over here. You can see that up there. What I like is the numbers light up as you as the RPM gauge goes, but it ghosts them out if they're not. And then of course on the right, you've got your digital speedometer. It's also got the analog gauge, so that'll move. And the numbers will light up as you go. And then you've got where it says off route. That's where your turn by turn directions will show up. And then in the middle of the screen, you know, you've got um, just some basic information. Um, I can change that. I can see my average miles per gallon. I'm just toggling through with this switch here. I can see um, tire pressure and I can see some trailer stuff right here along with, uh, uh, I think that's, I think that's uh, transmission temperature, but it may be engine temperature. And then of course you've got your steering angle indicator and that's when you're using this rotary knob. Um, trip remaining, and then you're back to the screen again. And then anything you wanna reset, you just press and hold the okay button. All right, so now if I go back into settings for a minute, I wanna, sh I wanna do one thing. I'm gonna go back up here to display setup and we're gonna go to the tack and I'm gonna take the tack off and, and then I'm just gonna go back and you're gonna see how it changes. 
See, now I've got media here. I've got my speedometer in the middle. And then all that stuff I was toggling through is now on the right. Now the screen's back to where it looked like at the beginning. Uh, let's go through some of these other buttons. So let's start with the HUD. This has a really nice, uh, it's gotta be close to a, man, I, I don't could find the exact measurements, but it's, it's long. It's, oh, it's at least a foot, it's at least 12 inches, if not bigger, maybe 15. Um, it uses DLP technology, uh, so that's like a series of little micro mirrors and a, and a color wheel, and, and it makes it easier to see in all types of light. So if I press the HUD button, okay, then I can set it on or off. I can do the brightness, the HUD position, the content, and what I like is that it makes you look at the HUD while you're doing it. So if I press OK for brightness, now my brightness gauge actually shows up in my HUD which I think is right. Most of the time we see that in the uh, driver's information screen and you're actually looking at the HUD. So to put it in the HUD display is a nice, nice thing. Okay, and if I go down here to HUD position, again, I'll press okay. And this time I can raise or lower it. And if I go back one, go down, I can do image rotation where then I can make it tilt left or right. And if you've never had a HUD before, those are all really useful tools because depending on how you sit in the seat and your height, uh, you have a different perspective. All right, that's the HUD. Now, if I click on the media button, that brings the, my sources up into the middle of the screen. So let's say I wanna go to uh, Sirius and I just press okay. Now it brings up my favorites right here, okay? And if I press media again, it goes away. If I press it one more time, I can get FM radio. And now I can go through my presets there. So I'm going to hit the back button again. It works the same way for AM radio. Uh, if you want to just simply scroll through different presets, you do have these left and right um, buttons here on the left side of the steering wheel, as well as a volume. And then um, you, can, um, you can just change stations by doing this without going into this screen. Right? And it shows up uh, in the uh, infotainment screen as well. All right, let's hit the back button here. All right, so that was uh, media. So if I go down to navigation, you're gonna get a bunch of choices here where you can uh, you look at POIs, you can cancel the route, you can set something for my home so it has a built-in address to go to, previous destinations and favorites, and then a nearby POI. And again, where it says off route, that's where your turn by turn directions will show up. So if I, uh, if I go back to navigation quick and I hit cancel route, you notice that disappears. Now, with the navigation not showing, you notice my screen just changed. I just did a toggle up. This has a calm screen on it, where it basically, basically takes away the information on the far right and the far left, moves the media up to the top center of the screen, and then gives you your, your uh, um, speedometer as well as your driver assistance features like lane keeping assist and the adaptive cruise control uh, gap uh, indicator. So if you want your dashboard to look a little simpler, you can do that. Okay, uh, you know, phone. this is a, a hang up for your phone. And then this one here, if you push and hold it, I don't have my phone hooked up right now, but if you do, it'll connect to either Siri or the Google Assistant. And on an Android phone, and, you, and then you can turn that on. You can, and then you can hang up the phone with this button. All right. So I'm going to go toggle one back here, and we'll just get back to some basic information. So lots of ways you can adjust this uh, driver's information screen. Next, we're going to move over to the infotainment screen. So on the infotainment screen, this is a 10-inch screen. It has, uh, it's run by Sync 3, and it has uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, AM and FM and HD radio, Sirius XM radio, and Bluetooth. Now this has the Revell uh, premium audio system in there. there. There are 20 speakers. It's approximately 1,200 watts of power, somewhere in that vicinity. Um, and yes, that does include sub subwoofers, and the sound is terrific. So despite the, the fact that the screen is all touch control, there are some physical buttons. For instance, down here, you've got a, a volume. You have got a power button to turn it off. You've got a skip forward, uh, skip backwards, skip forward button. And then uh, since the rear has entertainment controls, you can lock the rear audio out. 
so they can't change anything. Or you can turn it on and unlock it. And then, of course, you have a physical tune button. And I'll show you some of these buttons uh, a little bit later. All right. So, in general, uh, when we start here, uh, this is the home screen, and you get there by pressing on that button right there. Um, you get a split view where you've got a navigation, you've got media, and you've got your phone. And then down here, you've got some, like, your heated steering wheel button. Here you've got driver temperature and passenger temperature. This is a tri-zone climate control. Um, and uh, if you want to see the rear, then you can go down to the uh, controls right here. And right under the menu button, there's a rear button. So if I hit the rear button, then I get the rear controls. Here's my fan, here's my power, auto, lock the rear so no one can change, and then the temperature. So if you click on the X and it goes away and you're back to the home screen. So on any one of these screens, if you click on it, it will become a, a full screen. So here we go. See, if I do that, I go back here, we'll go to media, same thing. So all, all those screens work the same way. You can enlarge them. Heated stream wheel button, of course, you can just turn that right off if you want right there. And then down below, you have got a, a digital compass and then you've got these icons. Okay, so the first one is audio. If I click on that, you're going to go up here to go to sources, and you then have AM, FM, Sirius, um, you know, HD radio is already built in, uh, and then you got Bluetooth stereo so for your phone. If you want to save a, a station, um, go to something here, and if I just let's let's just take this one here. If I just press and hold here, it's now saved. You notice I've got three dots. That means I've got three screens of presets. Now, if I go to sources here and I say, let's change to a Sirius, and I'm gonna go, here's my presets down here. I got the same kind of setup. Okay, so if I want to go somewhere, it'd be the same way. I would go to the channel I want, press and hold, and it would save it. Um, You've got direct tune right here, which if you go back to FM, is the same button. There's the HD radio button. We can go to HD radio one, HD radio two, or HD radio three. And then direct tune just allows you to go ahead and plot a number in. If you like the rotary dial type, <clears throat> just go down here to the tune button and you can physically just scroll through the stations. So it, and it works the same way again on Sirius. There it goes. Down here, you've got your phone. And this is where you can add a phone. And you do that through Bluetooth. Okay? And you can just follow the prompts on the screen. It's quite easy. Here, this does have built-in navigation. And so um, it's got a couple of things that, that will probably be worth knowing. First of all, your search button. You can go there and you can just type in an address. It's got some things for, you know, look at your history. Where have you been recently? And you can just look at that and click on it and go. Uh, points of interest is what POI uh, stands for. And then, of course, you've got search and a bunch of, uh, you know, capital letters and, and uh, different kinds of things that you can get at depending on what you need to type in. So quite a complete keyboard. All right. If I go to menu down here, I can change the screen view. The navigation settings, I can look at where am I, a point of interest, favorites, history, and then I've got one more screen, I got home and work. So that's where you can change some of the just the settings and how your map looks and how it works. Like does it avoid toll roads? Okay, I do have a plus and minus right here that if I click on, I can zoom in or zoom up. And then right here, if I change it, I get a 3D heads up, a true north, and then a normal view. It shows your car the way you would see it driving. Now, over here, we have uh, apps. So you've got add a device. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. All right, you can find some additional mobile apps that will work. And then you have a Sirius XM travel link. Now, if you've never used this before, it's really nice. I mean, you can look at traffic, fuel prices, weather, movie listings, sports info, ski conditions, parking, weather alerts. Oh, I mean, it's, it's just really nice. Um, and, and you get that as part of a, the a, a trial subscription uh, when you purchase the car. All right, over here we've got settings. Now in settings, this is where you can change anything that's contained 
uh, in here. So for instance, your clock. You can go in here and you can change the time. You can set it to a 24 hour mode. Uh, you can go up here, you got auto daylight savings time, automatic time zone update. So as you are driving through different time zones, it will automatically update. Or you can reset the clock to GPS time. Hit the back button there. Um, you have, of course, your phone button, which we saw down here. Uh, 911, 911 assist is a, is a standard feature on Ford and Fords and Lincolns. Um, basically, if you have an accident, it's going to call emergency services for you and then basically give them your location as far as I understand how it works. And then it will transfer over to a, like a speaker system where you can talk to the operator. Um, let's see. Let's keep going over here. Automatic updates. Don't have to worry about doing the updates yourself. You can have these automatic if you want. You can use a Lincoln Way app on your phone, which will allow you to remote start, unlock, unlock things, roll down windows, all sorts of cool things. Um, you can set up your Wi-Fi. This does have a, a, a Wi-Fi hotspot. It also has a modem built into it. We're going to take a look at a couple of these. So I'm going to take a look at vehicle. So under vehicle, you can turn on or off vehicle uh, rear occupant alert. And when you shut off the car, it basically shows up in your infotainment screen telling you to check the back seat. You can look at the camera settings here. Uh, enhanced Park Aid turns on uh, your, your sensors, okay? Review camera delay. Uh, if you turn that on, uh, when you put it back into drive after being in reverse, the rear view camera will stay on up until about five miles an hour. I, I use that on mine and I, and I do like that feature. Uh, let's go back here. Um, you can look at the onboard uh, a modem serial number for some reason. You can do the door keypad code. Useful, especially if you're buying it secondhand. Um, and then you can back up the start pass code. So with this car, with the Lincoln Way app, if you, uh, on your phone, if you didn't have your keys, and you can actually get into the car and start it with that, or there's a way to do it through the keypad as well. So lost keys are, are, are no longer an issue as long as you have the keypad programmed uh, and or you have the Lincoln Way app on your phone. Now on the display itself here, we can turn it off. We can have a calm screen. Sometimes at night that might be nice. All right, calm screen just gives you a clock and date. You also uh, can change the background. So you have a different um, look, kind of from light gray to dark black. Uh, you can change the brightness over here. And you can change the mode from auto to just day or just night. Auto means the screen will automatically dim at night and I'll automatically get brighter during the day. Okay. Um, let's go over here. We have got ambient light. All right, here you've got multiple colors. Uh, this vehicle does have ambient lighting um, all over the place. So you can select your color and you can raise and lower the intensity. It's a very, very simple system. And it works really well. I, I like how simple it is. So those are your choices for colors. All right, you also do have 30-way perfect position seats on both sides in the front. and. All of the controls are in the door, but you can also access them through the infotainment screen. So for instance, right now I'm on driver. If I want to do passenger, I just click on passenger. So up here, you can you can change the intensity and it will show you, this is the lumbar, and it shows you where it's adjusting. There's a second part of the lumbar and there's a third part of the lumbar. So it's got three different zones just to adjust that lumbar. Now over here, You've got uh, lumbar on the far right and left, and then you've got it in the seats. I mean, it's just awesome. Now, um, I can uh, just click over to passenger and I can do anything for the passenger. Let me go over to uh, driver here a minute. So this part up here is the back of the seat and this part controls the bottom of the seat. So it'll massage in two areas. Now, the one thing that I do notice is that when you turn like the back on, it shuts the bottom off. And when you turn the bottom on, it shuts the back off. So they don't operate together, but you can massage your back or you can massage your seat. And then of course you can do that for the passenger as well. 
All right, you can set up personal profiles. So I talked a little bit about setting up your key fobs. This is where you do that. And you can set up the three different key fobs. All right, this is where you would set up, you adjust anything to do with sound. So you've got your treble, your mid-range, your bass. This does have the Revell 20 speaker premium audio system and it sounds utterly fantastic. It's really nice. Revell is owned by Harman Kardon. Uh, so that should speak to its quality a little bit. All right, uh, but you just got lots and lots of options here. All right, you do have a valet mode. If you click on there, you enter a pin and then you can disable some of the systems like how loud the car goes, that uh, stereo goes and that kind of stuff. All right, I hope this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching.